I'm not your friend or anything, damn. You think that you're the man, I think therefore I am. Stop. I don't know what you're talking about. Get your pretty name out of my mouth. I'm not your friend or anything. You think that you're the man, I think therefore I am. Hello, and today we're doing Championship Predictions for Match Day 31. That was the song of the weekend. It was, of course, I Think There Are Four I Am by Billie Eilish. Don't know why I put that accent on, but we felt like it. So, today we're doing Championship Predictions, and what is going to be the colour of the week? Well, I'm feeling a little bit of orange. And the theme of the week this week is actually going to be, what is it? Billy Elliot, the movie. Great movie. Now, if you're wondering, why is that the theme? To be honest, I don't know. But part of me thinks it's because of some transfer activity I've done in the gaffer.io fantasy championship team. And that is because I brought in Harvey Elliott for his game against Nottingham Forest. I'm telling you, he's going to get an absolute hat-trick. So hopefully, fingers crossed, he does well. But anyway... We'll get into my fantasy team a little bit later, but we're going to start off with some championship score predictions. And let's first of all look back at how we did last week. Now, I've got to be honest, I've not seen all the results. So I need to just quickly work out, and um, with my mathematical skills, how we did last week. Now, Millwall, surprisingly, actually won a game. Um, I know, they haven't done that a lot this season, but that was an incorrect prediction from me. I said a nil-nil draw, so... Yeah, not ideal, but it is what it is. Um, we also went with a Swansea win, but it was only 1-0. Um, and a bit of a shame for a Swansea win, just because it meant Watford, after their 1-0 win at Deepdale, we had to dig deep, and we got it at Deepdale. Um, after that win, we were third. We got knocked down back to fourth, uh, thanks to that win from Swansea. Goal from Connor Roberts um, was enough to see them past um, Chris Hewton's team. So, yeah... At least they got the correct result there. Um, just the three points, though. Coventry against Norwich. That's what we like to see. I said 2-0, and that's what it was. With goals from Timo Puki and the partner in crime. It's Emmy Buendia. So, yeah, fair play to myself. Eight points there. Correct score. We want a few more of those. But next up, we had Brentford. Now, Brentford, I don't know where this went wrong, really, because I thought they'd bounce back from that defeat to Barnsley. And it went... Absolutely pear-shaped, it's got to be said. And um, they were leading. Ivan Tony once again, ripping it up for my fantasy team. But I chose the right captain this week. I Captain Pedro. Thank goodness. Uh, he got his penalty and scored it um, against, of course, the team of Preston. But this week, Brentford had a mare. Uh, they really did. And after that Tony goal, they equalised on 72 minutes through Samfield. And just four minutes later, Charlie Austin does it again. Now... I actually am pretty happy with you, Charlie Austin. Well done, son. Because you've beaten our promotion rivals, Brentford. So it does help Watford out, but it doesn't help my fantasy team out. So, you know, it is what it is. And equally, it doesn't help my predictions out. Because I said a 3-0 Brentford win. So no points for me there. And then Barnsley-Blackburn. We said a 1-0 Blackburn win. Now, at times, you're thinking, surely, surely this is going to be a correct score. But this season is just starting to get a little bit unpredictable because Barnsley against all the odds got the win um they only got a l long you know late in, in the in the game from um what's the word C consolation got there uh from Adam Armstrong so actually they didn't go ahead uh, it was it was Colton Morris that got Barnsley the opener and then Alex Mowat uh, once again to make it two so uh yeah a bit of a shock there no points again and then we said 2-1 to Bournemouth against Rotherham. It was, in fact, 1-0. So we get the correct result and the goal difference there. So five points. Not too shabby at all. So we'll take that. Um, and that wrapped up last week. So we got another correct score in there for Preston against Watford. Get in. And we got a correct result in the Reading win at Bristol City. So all in all, not a great week. I had quite a few games that I got zero in. But also, also we... Balanced it out with a couple of correct scores. So, yeah, don't mind it at all. Let's get into this week. And uh, we're going to 
first of all, predict a game between Watford and Derby County. Now, lads, this is an interesting game. Uh, Wayne Rooney's team have improved in form, and they got their win 2-1 against Wickham on Tuesday. Uh, or, or Iche, uh, Uche Ikpiezu. Now, he's been absolutely brilliant for Wickham recently, but not in this game, because he scored a penalty... But then he also scored an own goal. Um, and Andre Wisdom uh, was the one to get the, the win against Wickham uh, in the end of the day. And before that, Derby were actually getting a few a few results as well uh, against Middlesbrough. And I said how Rooney's been imp improving their results. So this won't be easy. We can't take this lightly, lads. Um, we've got to go into this full throttle. But away from home, we know Derby can be a little bit, a little bit of a mess sometimes. They absolutely got embarrassed against Rotherham. Um, and there's been other games this season. I think they lost, was it to Coventry or something? It was a, it was like a lower team um, that they'd be expected to, to beat, really, and uh, they didn't. But then ultimately, with Derby, we know they can beat the big teams, like Bournemouth this season. So Derby are a, a tough team to call. They lost to Rotherham uh, when they played them at home. Um, but I don't know. I'm just going to favour Watford. I have to, really. They've lost to Sheffield Wednesday this season as well. I don't know, but... Maybe this Rooney team is different now this this time, but I think this Watford team is in in a good period of um, turning the corner, uh, getting confidence. The squad is in a good place. Let's try and keep it that way on on the Sky Sports, um, you know, football. I'm gonna go with a Watford two one victory, um, and I'm gonna say that goals are scored on the day by. First of all, we shall say. That it is none other than Don't worry, I didn't freeze, I just was thinking. Um yeah, so first of all it'll be a goal through Ken Semmer. We know what happens, he's always lethal. And then we score our second through Joao Pedro. And then Derby get back a consolation late on, uh, and it's gonna be scored by Colin Kazim Richards. And I think that Semmer will get that goal on 25 minutes. Pedro makes it two on 63. And then Kazim Richards gets back a consolation on 87. All right, now we've got a game that is between, of course, Coventry and Brentford. It's the 12.30 kickoff. And Coventry come into this with a defeat against Norwich. Brentford also off the back of a defeat, but it was against QPR. So, you'd imagine Brentford win here. Surely they will. I'm saying Coventry nil, Brentford four. I know, four goals. I know, it's going to happen, all right? So, the first one is going to come from Ivan Tony. Who else? The second through Brian... Is it Mbemu? I think so. And then the third goal is coming through Tony again. So, he's getting a brace. And then the last goal for Brentford, Josh... De Silva. All right, now we've got a game between Norwich City and Rotherham. And this is a bit one-sided, like the Coventry game. Now, Norwich have been pretty hard to stop recently. Um, two wins on the bounce will give them uh, definitely the confidence they needed. Um, they had a little stuttering run, which included them getting knocked out of the FA Cup. But, you know, I think they are a good team to, to watch this season. Rotherham, well, they are still near the... Relegation zone, um, dangerously near, one point above Sheffield Wednesday. And two defeats on the bounce is not exactly ideal. But, you know, this is a Norwich team that can be a bit of a Jekyll and Hyde this season. Rotherham can cause a shock, but I don't see it here. I'm going to say a comfortable 2-0 win to Norwich City. Um, nice clean sheet for the, for the lads there. With goals coming from, first of all, let's say it shall be... The midfielder, Oliver Skip. And then second of all, a goal that comes from the winger, Todd Cantwell. All right, now we've got a game that is between Huddersfield Town and Swansea City. Um, now, this sees, obviously, um, Swansea go to uh, Yorkshire. And it's a three o'clock kickoff. Huddersfield didn't exactly uh, light the world uh, on fire against Middlesbrough. They... Lost a game in which they were playing against uh, 10 men. Um, they did obviously get the opening goal through Isaac and Benza. 
he usually looks like the the big main threat for Huddersfield, but they just didn't see it out. And uh, in the second half, had a bit of a, a stalling, um, trying to get back into the game, but it was all done, the damage in the second half of that first half, uh, if you get what I mean. Duncan Watmore um, and Ashley Fletcher. Of course, one was playing for Sunderland and the other was also playing for Sunderland. So it's ironic they both play now for Middlesbrough. But, you know, I think that Middlesbrough will be able to just weather the storm um, against Reading. But that's a future game. Let me, you know, keep back on track. In terms of Huddersfield, I think they're going to be far too uh, struggling against Swansea. So Huddersfield nil, Swansea 3. And goals in this game, well, we'll say the first one comes from Andre Ayew. Actually, no, we're going to change our prediction, all right? Hear me out. It's going to be Huddersfield 1, Swansea 3. I think Huddersfield will score, um, and that will be through, let's say... Oh, I don't actually know how any, any of Huddersfield's players. Just let me uh, let me investigate for a second. Let's say it will be through... The midfielder, Alex Pritchard. And then Swansea hit back with goals from Andre Ayew. And then we'll say it is going to be... Jake Bidwell. So that's the second for Swansea. And then the third to put the cherry on the icing on the cake for the Swans will be scored by... Uh, let's say, um, the man that scored against Norwich a few weeks ago, it's Connor Horahan. All right, that's a 3-1 prediction. Next up, we have a very interesting game, it's got to be said, uh, and that is between Cardiff and Preston. Now, why do I think this is interesting? Well, Cardiff, they're still a big team. They've still got decent players. Their form this season has been poor. Preston, they actually were pushing for the playoffs uh, not too long ago. This season, a bit of a nightmare, but they are starting to improve their form. And they didn't really uh, have enough against Watford. A couple of chances from Ched Evans that should have been scored, but it wasn't. So, yeah, I don't know. I feel both teams will be really trying to prove a point here that they're not um, a failed version of, of what we think they should be. But ultimately, I think Cardiff will have enough to beat this Preston team. Um, so I'll say Cardiff City to win this one by two goals to one. And goal scorers in the game will be, first of all, let's say Sean Morrison. And then I will predict that Preston equalise through Scott Sinclair. But then Cardiff respond and get the winner with a goal from the midfielder, Josh Murphy. All right, now we've got a game up between the likes of Stoke City and Luton Town. Now, I think Stoke haven't been absolutely on flames this season, but ultimately they haven't been the worst either. Um, so I think they should have enough to beat this Luton team. We know with Stoke they can defend resolutely. Um, so I'll say Stoke won Luton nil in quite a dull game. But the man that gets the moment of magic is... In midfield, it is Powell. Powell for Stoke. Um, you know he's a, he's a bit of a baller, to be fair. Uh, is a good old midfielder there. Nick. All right. He used to play for Man United, didn't he? I think he did. Anyway, um, the next game to predict is between, of course... First of all, we have ourselves uh, Sheffield Wednesday. And they're playing Birmingham. Now... Both these teams have struggled this season, um, in, in short. But I do feel that Birmingham surely have to get uh, a win soon. So we're going to edge towards Birmingham here. Um, and it's going to be Sheffield Wednesday 1, Birmingham 2. And goal scorers in this one. Um, it's going to be, first of all for Birmingham, a goal from Scott Hogan. And then the second for Birmingham to make it uh, a two-goal cushion is going to be by the midfielder, Kieftenbeld. And finally, Preston, or sorry, not Preston, um, Sheffield Wednesday, should say, uh, get the consolation back. 
And that is through Liam Palmer. All right, let's get cracking with the next fixture. It is going to be between the likes of uh, QPR and Bournemouth. Now, QPR, what do I have to say about them? They've been a team that has been strange this season. At times brilliant, at times awful. They have three wins on the bounce, and that's always going to be massive for the squad. Um, but they have conceded far too many goals. So, against this Bournemouth team, will they come unstuck? Quite possibly. Cardiff, um, you know, they have been a decent side this season. Bournemouth, they have been good, but they're actually sitting fairly close to Cardiff um, in sixth. So, they have to be bet doing better. Uh, and there's rumours... I don't know if this is true, but that maybe Bournemouth go and get Thierry Henry as manager. I mean, imagine the scenes. Um, it would just be absolutely brilliant um, for the championship, but also for, for Bournemouth. Um, and apparently, Patrick Vieira is also rivaling uh, that spot. But I don't know. I just, I think they're probably going to hold talks. Whether those talks will be successful, who knows? But we shall see. We shall see, my friends. So. Yeah, um, Bournemouth actually just recently had a home fixture, uh, home fixture, uh, away fixture, sorry, moved um, against Huddersfield. So that's been rearranged. But this one hasn't been. Um, and I think this one will be Bournemouth all over. So QPR nil, Bournemouth 2. And goals in this one will come from the new signing, Shane Long. And then from the midfielder, that is Philip Billing. All right, now we've got a game that is between, if I can just find it, Bristol City, Barnsley. Hmm. Well, Bristol City are in a bit of a nightmare situation. They've been conceding goals for fun. They've been struggling to score goals. And now ma the manager has gone out the door. Dean Holden is left. has left. So it's a game that is a big opportunity for Bristol City to amend their issues. Barnsley have been a good team to watch this season. Hence why they sit fairly comfortably outside the, the relegation um, area uh, in 10th. Whereas, you know, Bristol City have probably been having the season that Barnsley would expect to have. And Barnsley have been having the season that Bristol City fans would expect of them. So, in this way, I think that it's been a bit of a swap. But I think it'll be a swap in fortunes because Bristol City have lost five on the bounce or even more. I can't look past this table uh, form. Whereas Barnsley have two on the bounce. So I think that they're going to get swapped. And that Bristol City will win this game to go within one point of Barnsley. And it will be, of course, Bristol City 2, Barnsley 0. And goal scorers for the Robins, I reckon, will be, first of all, Riley Towler. And then, Chris Brunt. Does he actually still play for them? Does he actually still play for them? Oh, he's probably injured, isn't he? Surely. Oh, yeah, released by Bristol City. All right, well, <laughs> that's fine then. Um, surely he doesn't play for them anymore then. No, second goal instead will be uh, Chris Martin. All right, now we've got a game that is between the teams of Millwall and Wickham Wanderers. I think Wickham win this, you know. I really do think Wickham have just got that fight in them. And they can just... Pull a rabbit out of the hat, as to speak. So, I'm going to say Millwall 3. Wait for it. Wickham Wanderers 4. I know, it's a big call. It's a seven-goal thriller. But both teams don't have great defences. So, it could happen, all right? So, goal scorers in this absolute legendary match in the championship. First of all, it will be Woods for Millwall. Then Millwall get a second through... Uh, Malone and then I reckon that they will once again score Millwall three goals I know it's a, it's a crazy it's a crazy thing but it's going to happen and that will be coming from Matt Smith so it's 3-0 at this point you're thinking surely surely Wickham are out of the out of the contest but no that's the glory of football because it will be a goal from Joe Jacobson from the spot once again and then Wickham score their second through defender Josh Knight. And then they score their third through the forward Uche Ikpezu to redeem himself from that own goal uh, in the last game. And it's 3-3. Three, three. 
But they get the winner through the defender, Daryl Horgan. Absolute scenes. Anyway, that's my prediction. And we have one more game to go in these championship predictions. And that match is, of course, between Nottingham Forest and that Blackburn Rovers. So um, this is going to be uh, a three o'clock kickoff on Saturday. It sees 12th take on 18th. Forest have had two wins in the last five. So a bit of improvement under Hewton. Blackburn have actually been on a pretty poor run. Three defeats on the spin. Before that, two wins. So, I don't know with Blackburn, but I think they should eventually get back to their, their usual selves. This Forest team are a team that, you know, struggle at times, but I think that it could be a game where either it's a nil-nil or we see lots of goals from both teams. And I'm going to go for the latter. I'm going to say 2-2 in this game. Um, Blackburn just, I know I, I said they should respond, but I just think they're a little bit hit for confidence and Forrest will prey on that. So yeah, four goal thriller. Uh, the first goal through Harvey Elliott. The second to equalise for the home side is going to be Cyrus Christie. And then Forrest go ahead, I know, uh, and Blackburn have to save themselves, but Forrest go ahead with a goal from Sammy Amiobi. What a baller. And then Blackburn get their equaliser. But who is it going to be scored by? It's going to be through Bradley Dack. And that wraps up my predictions for match day 31 of the championship. Now, let's get into some championship fantasy football. Oh yes, people, that's right. And for this championship fantasy section, we're going to talk through what I'm doing this week. Now, I've made one transfer and one transfer only. Last week, we didn't exactly do well. Um, 70 points with a minus four hit. Could be worse, but it is a red arrow. We're down to 998 overall rank. But we're going big this week. We're going for it. We've brought in Harvey Elliott um, for Jamal Lowe, who's just not really performing for Swansea. Um, whereas Ayu is, I just think, is more a bit more reliable. He'll, he'll probably go and score now, uh, Jamal Lowe, against Huddersfield, but I hope not. Um, but yeah, Elliott is going to do the bits, I'm sure, against Forrest. But we're playing the chip this week of... Away day, right? The away day boost basically means that it's a times two multiplier added to any players that are playing in away fixtures. So that's quite interesting. No captain multipliers, by the way, can be applied for any player or position. So it's an interesting one. If we can get some away goals, which I think we can because the fixtures are looking pretty nice, then we could for it be in for a good week. Now, in goal, we've got Daniel Backman. We brought him in last week. We benched him. Bit of a shame. Because then Fre Freddie Woodman did get a clean sheet, but he didn't get as many points as Backman. Backman got eight. What a legend. Woodman got seven. So I don't think Foster's going to be back too soon. So Backman is playing against Derby. Fingers crossed for a clean sheet. I didn't predict it in my, in my prediction. But defensively, we've looked pretty solid over the last few weeks. So we've got to hope... With the likes of Sierra Alta and, uh, uh, of course, Messina getting those challenges in, we can keep that up. But in defence, who have we got? We've got Sean Morrison, who I reckon is going to score against uh, Preston. We've got Cyrus Christie, who's got the attacking potential to get a goal or an assist. And then we've got Max Ahrens. Um, he's facing, of course, this week an interesting game uh, of, I think it's Rotherham. Now, surely there's a clean sheet there. Or if not, an attack and return. I didn't say it, uh, Aaron's would score, but I'm I'm pretty confident of a clean sheet. So, hopefully. And then we've got Brian Mbemu. Come on, against Coventry, you should be doing something. Uh, Harvey Elliott, we just brought in. Water player. Uh, I know I did just say that Blackburn I haven't been uh, getting results, but he can still score in this game. Um, and then, the rest of my team, we have ourselves a little bit of... Um, oh, it's actually gone. All right. Yeah. Uh, Nick Powell. What a player. Against Luton. No disrespect to Luton, but I want you to absolutely destroy Luton. Nick Powell. Might as well. Um, and then Ken Semmer. Emergency captain this week. What a player. Um, did well in the last few weeks. Didn't do too much in the last game, but he did get five points just for a performance bonus. So we'll take that. Um and obviously the other Watford player we've got uh, going forward, Joao Pedro, 
is the absolute goat. Um, what a penalty against uh, Preston. But he's going to be vice-captain this week. I'm not so confident of a goal uh, this time. It could still happen, but I think the man that I'm captaining, which is Ivan Tony, is going to be back to his best, I'm sure of it, um, against Coventry. Um, hence why I've predicted the brace, and hence why he gets the captaincy. And then the other forward is Andre Ayew, facing Huddersfield. Not a bad fixture at all. On my bench, we've got Freddie Woodman, Michael Elise, who's just not exactly been helping me out. I mean... At least say for Reading, he got an assist last week when he was on my bench. He got booking, which I guess is all right, but he got an assist. And he, he just seems to score points when I don't want him to. Like the, the, the week before that, week 29, when I actually bothered to play him, he got two points. Like, the, that's that's the issues we've got right now. So hopefully Elise can just sort, his, sort himself out and actually get at goals and get assists when I want him to. Um, but otherwise, uh, he's just getting loads of two-pointers, which is uh, not what you like to see. But this week, we've decided to bench him. Hope that doesn't uh, you know, backfire. But Middlesbrough are quite a tough team to break down. Um, we'll see what happens. Um, but I did actually go uh, and forget that game. So <laughs> let's predict it now. Uh, Reading against Middlesbrough. I said in my preview uh, that what I said previously, I thought Middlesbrough might weather the storm in this game. Hence why I'm not playing. Elise for, for Reading. So we're going to go for a nil-nil uh, in this game. Nil Warnock, part of the bus football. It's going to happen. All right, that's what I'm saying. Um, but back to the fantasy. Second on my bench, we've got Pippa, the defender, playing Swansea this week. Tough game. Don't want to play him. And finally, Richard Wood is third on my bench. He's a bit of a meme at this point. He's not exactly good this season. He's been, uh, he's been getting yellow cards all the time. But... You know, he did get five points just for some clean sheets uh, in the last game. So it's not the worst thing in the world. I suppose he could get a goal, but I just don't really see it at this point. It says he got a clean sheet, but he didn't against Bournemouth. So I'm not sure what that's about. It says first half clean sheet, second half clean sheet, goal conceded minus one, yellow card. So I I've got to be honest, I do not know how, how this works. Oh, sorry, I was looking in the wrong game week. That'll be why. No, sorry, Richard Wood got four points. Oh, okay, so he got a second half. It's funny how the, the points work. So he got a second half clean sheet, but he didn't get a... Because obviously Bournemouth scored their goal um, in the in the first half. So <laughs> he gets a second half clean sheet. But anyway, yeah, basically Richard Wood has been doing absolutely nothing for my team recently. So it's, it's not exactly ideal. Whereas the other defender that I'm starting this week in that fixture, Max Aaron's got a performance bonus against... Uh, Coventry, so yeah, that's why we're playing him basically. So that's my team uh, for this game week. Hopefully, it gets loads of points. In terms of where we are right now with the uh, with the league, we're currently ranked 126th in the Ben HD YouTube League, which is all right, but it's it's not that amazing because there's about 500 people in that league. So meh. And then in the main one, the main one we care about, which is the Voices of the Vic uh, League which is a group of Watford fans uh, battling it out for fantasy football. I'm trying to get to second. I've pretty much given up on first at this point because first with Bacon Sarney is on 2,014 points, which is mad. Whereas I'm on 1,777 and second place is on 1,806. So there's a little bit of a chance for me to catch up with, with second, but... Yeah, it's it's not ideal, but I just want to keep getting more points each week. Last week, 70 was not bad uh, with the minus four. The week before that was dreadful, 41. And then the two previous weeks before that, 116, 110, and a very solid score of... Actually, no, it wasn't a solid score. It was 42. And the week before that was 20 for 20, and 50, and 34, and 45, and oh, 71. So basically, we have been improving uh, in recent weeks. So let's hope that, that can carry on into week 31. But thanks for watching my championship predictions. Um, it's been a long one, but a good one. So you've spent your time wisely. Well done. And I'll see you in the next video, which will be most likely Premier League predictions or maybe some other league that I'm predicting this weekend. If we've got the time, it's a busy schedule uh, and it's a quick turnaround. The, you know, there's only been about two days, I think, this week that there hasn't been a Premier League game. And that's obviously today and Tuesday. And there's more action uh, tomorrow. But 
I thought I'd get these out before the Friday game tomorrow in the Championship. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.